Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Zero to Hero series. This is episode 2. Now, since episode 1.5, we've gone to another locals. We've got some rewards you can see in front of us. Uh, one OTS pack and two Dimensional Force. Still chasing that ultimate rare Water Enchantress of the Temple. But most importantly, we've made a few changes to the deck. I've noticed some bricks and I've taken them out. I've added in some extra cards. You know, we've changed up a few ratios. So I'm really excited, let's get straight into it. We'll start of course with the pack opening and um, yeah, let's see what we get. Okay, so let's start with the OTS. No, no, let's start with the Dimension Force pack. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really have any hopes for this pack. I've opened so many at this point, but you know, it's always it's always uh, nice to, just to see what comes in a pack, you know. I've never gotten a Starlight before, by the way, so. Maybe, ooh, Exo Sisters Magnifica, yo, that's a good pull. Let's change the camera. That's a really good pull because, well, I mean, Exo Sisters is going to get incredibly popular thanks to Splite. So, that is an amazing pull, man. Let's go. Feeling good, man. Feeling good about this. Let's get into this pack now. Start with Therion Duke, Duke Vol, Duke Yule, whatever his name is, Biblisp, some Ancient Warrior stuff, Scarecrow Alternative. And Odai's Wing Dragon, okay, not the best, it's a super rare, but it's a cool looking super rare nonetheless. And let's move on to the, the reason why some of you might be coming to the video, let's get it. Okay, so let's see. Snow, Longfire Blossom, and ah, we didn't get the ultimate rare, but we got a... See here, Caius, the Shadow Monarch. Man, that looks good. Oof. If you bought the old school, old school structure deck that this card came in, um, then this is like extra nostalgic for you. I know it is for me. And yeah, wow, that is a sick. That is wicked, man. Okay. So we we'll move on to the, I guess, the ratios that we've changed and some of the new and old cards that we've taken out. You know, I'm really excited about the changes made so far. I think they've done really well when dueling, and I've noticed them too, which is, you know, is always a good thing. So, yeah, we'll go straight to that now. I've talked about ratios, but the main thing really is adding an Illegal Knight into the deck. I've just noticed this as a trend in winning San Avalon profiles. You know, if there's a trend and each profile has this card, it's probably a good thing. You know, I do think having Small World in the deck makes this card more live, more just a better consistency card as well. But nonetheless, having it in a Brave deck is actually really good. And I've been able to resolve this in Locals where, you know, it's such a threat that people have to answer it. And what they don't know is I have the Griffin as well. So, you know, Illegal Knight is an awesome card. And um, I'm going to keep it in the deck going forward. And so, guys, this is a interesting part of the deck. You know, I'm always... I think a theme of this channel is that I'm always talking about Cross Out. And in this build, I've changed the lineup quite a bit. We're instead running, we're still running three cross out, but we're changing the lineup that we use now. You know, Sanavlon is quite weak to Drawlin Lockbird, Ash Blossom, Imp and Vela. So these are the hand traps I've adjusted into the deck. So we're only running one of each. And these ratios have been working amazing for me. And then we're running the Drawlin Lockbird. So this is like the ratio I've decided to run here. One thing I always say is if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But I've changed it to this and it's been performing really, really well. You know, we don't mind seeing hand traps, but we also just want to see our combo pieces, our low kais. So, you know, with that being said, I think this is the lineup going forward. And, you know, cross out is cool because you can also declare rights and negate rights' effect from resolving. So, yeah, this is the lineup. I'm also running the droplet. You know, we're scared of that card. We're scared of Dark Rail no more. Having cross out in the deck means we can negate those cards from resolving and have a good time. So, you know what? These are the changes into the main deck uh, i'm gonna go next into cards that i've taken out and you know maybe some interesting talking points going forward i i don't want to break man i i've there's been so many instances where i've drawn these two cards and i've bricked like crazy and i've just had enough you know mardo i really like mardo's interaction it's a really simple one but it just i've drew it too many times it's a break it's not actually needed you know having you can get laurel out quite easily without mardo and go from there. So that's why Mardo has been taken out of the deck. I just think it's a nice to have. It's not necessary. And the next card. So yeah, I've actually taken that Snowdrop. It can feel like a brick. It's a very, very awkward brick sometimes. You need a plant on field and a plant on hand. And the plant on field has to be tributed as cost. 
So it's an incredibly awkward card. I think the Exceed is amazing, don't get me wrong, but I'm testing out this new build. You know, we have the Therions, we have the Brave, there's a lot of, and I think Snowdrop is like, again, another nice to have. I've been testing this deck on EDL Pro and maybe Snowdrop will come back in, but for now I've uh, decided to take it out. And some other cards that I were thinking about running. So I've taken out one Rights and I've added in a Foolish Barrel. I think Foolish Barrel is more flexible. I've taken out the Nibiru completely. In my head, I'm thinking if I always have Omni Negate ready to go, then I don't need to add the Nibiru. And some matchups these days are quite awkward. I'm seeing a lot of Eldritch, like a lot of Eldritch in my locals. So, you know, it's like a locals, it's like a meta, meta call for myself. So I've taken out the Nibiru completely. I want to put this card as a two of in the deck because drawing it makes your sewing really, really awkward. And you know what? That just might be the case. I might throw in this second copy the next time I compete. Because, you know, this card, if this effect resolves, it's really, really good and you really love it. And you know what? Drawing a second copy is not a bad thing. I really don't think it is. So, you know, Twin might become a two of in the main deck. And what I want to do, which I didn't do in the original deck properly, is actually go through the side deck. So I'm going to quickly go through that now. So to start with Twin Twister, you know, we, we are really scared of cards like uh, the anti-spells, the floodgates, the there can be only ones, the skill drains, the zombie worlds. So having, having two twists there is really good just to get those problematic cards out the way. Uh, running two Darkly No More, you know, I'm running two Droppers in the main. I thought, let me run four Monster Negations all together. So that's why there's two Dark Rulers. And, you know, it's a good cross-up target. It's an amazing cross-up target. So that's why that's there. Next, running three Evenly Matched. You know, again, this kind of has the same role as Twin Twister, but also it's an amazing board clear. And with Evenly Matched, you know, this card is an amazing card. You want to run three of it every time you try to run it. It acts like a Twin Twister at the same time as O, which I really, really enjoy. You know, this deck can lose the anti-spell. We run a lot of spells. So Evenly is just a good way to clear the board going second. And we run the Red Reboot. Again, I'm seeing a lot of Eldritch in my locals. And I think Eldritch is gaining popularity. So that's why Red Reboot is there. And of course, you know, we, we only only summon links in the extra deck so of course we run the debar for the despia matchups also a matchup punk therion matchup a lot of matchups in the game right now lose to d barrier and that's why we run it now speaking of anti-spell yes we lose to it quite hard but sky striker in my opinion gives us a tough time despia can give us a tough time you know they have a lot of resources if we've resolved our combo our spells are not as useful you know one thing about this deck is you either go all in sometimes or you don't so if you go all in, you know, you resolve the anti-spell, it's really tough for the opponent to deal with it. You could say Natura Roswhip does the same thing, but anti-spell is a trap card, and I think that just has its own level of security. So that's why we're running the anti-spells. And then the one rivalry as the 15th card. Now, I'm quite open to changing some ratios. I think rivalry is a bit awkward at one. At the same time, in the right matchup, it will just straight up winning the game, and they won't expect it, I don't think, at least. Some deck profiles that have topped has run the rivalry, so, you know, there is some expectation, I guess, if people are playing against Plant, they might expect it. Um, but I'm running it as one. I, I think I might change it. But I'm going to see how it goes. I haven't actually been able to resolve it yet, which is unfortunate. So I'm going to keep it and see how it does in the next uh, in the next uh, Locals I attend. Okay, so we're going to move on to the extra deck. Guys, I'm only going to mention a few cards from here. You've already seen the extra deck in the uh, episode one. But this is the card. This is the spice. You know, when a card as generic as this, as powerful as this exists in the game... It's hard not to say no to it. Now, I personally don't own a Baron, but I would still prefer the Sack again simply because our Therion field spell lets us recursion, lets us add a Therion back to hand, summon that Therion, add Rose Girl back to hand because you control a plant still, I'm assuming. Because again, the Therion field spell protects our cards. You summon Rose Girl, you activate this effect, suddenly you're less life points than them, and boom, you're, you're chilling, you're having a good time. And this card is like, the X Factor of Marvelous Capcom. I don't know if people have played that game, but yeah, this card is fascinating. I, I'm obsessed with this card. I hope he gets a play, Matt. You know, I would love to own that. When your life points are less than your opponents, is unaffected by card effects, and that just spells it all, to be honest. And the other change I made, so I'll be honest, guys, I've changed the combo slightly. So the combo of the deck, the initial early part of the combo as you climb into Jasmine's has changed quite a bit, and I might do a combo video on that let me know if you guys are interested in um, in me profiling one of those but yeah i've changed the ratio of healer to two to be honest i always wanted that two i just didn't have the second one and with taking out don sepio and with taking out the ricker exceed we made the space for again the second healer and the saki ken and i really like these ratios i think they're good i think they're smart picks so you know going forward we're going to keep this in and see how well they do 
I think the healer, the second healer is good because it gives us that second opportunity to resolve the Jasmine searches. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, and it's great in time as well. I think there was one round in locals where I gained life points and one in time. And yeah, guys, that was pretty much the video, you know, quite a short, snappy video. I didn't want to go too into depth of what certain cards do. We have episode one for that. So if you're interested in how the deck actually functions as a, you know, as a core, what it does, check out episode one. It's really good. You know, I break down some of the interactions in every single card that this deck provides. At the end of the day, we always want to see our loci and we have a lot of Omni in the gates to protect the way we get there and that's really exciting you know we play Theron, we play Brave and yeah guys that's that's been the video thank you so much for watching if you liked the video drop a like if you thought any of the ratios were interesting you know I've had some good interactions with people in the past in episode 1.5 you know one of the reasons why I wanted to start YouTube was to have these sort of discussions with people so I'm really enjoying that so far you know so if you have anything to mention if you think a certain ratio certain tech or deck profile is really good let me know i'd love to watch and check it out you know this series is kind of a group thing and you know just we're just trying to build we're just trying to build the deck together essentially and go from there you know trying to make it the best it can be with you know that personal experience of going through locals going through uh, duels and things like that so yeah guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video peace